Hi, you're watching the Universe channel. I'm Adriana Baranek, CEO of Miadra Group, and here is Man Baranek with me, Hi. our CTO. So today we will be covering a topic that really deserves a special mention, and uh, we will do it uh, with within two videos. So um, uh, uh, today's topic is private and hybrid cloud versus the public cloud. It might sound like a great promise if you are a company that has um, lots of employees, lots of money, lots of uh, um, people employed in your IT, then uh, having your own private or hybrid cloud might seem like a good idea. And uh, uh, we will talk today and uh, in the next video about uh, why it is not really such a good idea in the end. It's a spoiler alert, but um, first, Mladen, please tell me something more about uh, what, what is the history of private and public uh, hybrid cloud and uh, uh, what are they in fact? So historically corporations used to have their own uh, automation centers, data centers, uh, where they invested in uh, at first uh, mainframes, uh, big hardware, then they started uh, dispersing their compute by providing terminals and uh, somehow uh, uh, enterprises evolved towards uh, 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 personal computers. So, so suddenly terminals were upgraded from uh, uh, being connected to host to uh, enabling their workforce with desktops and uh, uh, after uh, 90s th there was a huge move uh, towards uh, enabling employees with uh, personal productivity software so uh, Windows Microsoft Office uh, gave uh, uh, workforce capabilities to do data processing locally while corporations developed a number of applications uh, databases uh, to process uh, data uh, centrally uh, after that th there was a number of changes especially with the advent of internet so internet suddenly uh, provided uh, uh, connectivity and enabled enterprises to interconnect, to send emails, messages, and finally to exchange data uh, in a way that uh, enabled new business models and changed how many uh, services are delivered or how products are actually produced. Uh, after uh, year 2000, uh, internet evolved uh, into mobile. So uh, in last 20 years, we saw a lot of new applications, new business models, because not only uh, employees with uh, desktop hardware or with uh, mobile uh, with, with uh, notebooks, uh, suddenly we got a huge amount of both customers and employees that are equipped with mobile uh, devices, with smartphones, they can access internet and they can do uh, purchasing, they can do um, uh, data acquisition and a number of other tasks using uh, enormous amount of uh, mobile devices connected to the internet. So uh, at that time, a public cloud became uh, a thing and uh, a lot of corporations uh, saw that their old uh, business models and their old infrastructure based on a data center and on their own uh, 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 resources uh, cannot uh, compete and does not make sense uh, for uh, business models that were uh, uh, challenging 
uh, them uh, on uh, coming from public cloud. Mm -hmm. So co companies like uh, Amazon, Google, uh, they, they have uh, specific uh, services they started offering by using uh, public cloud mm -hmm. uh, advantages. So uh, Google was obviously advertising uh, and uh, Amazon enabled uh, uh, efficient uh, shopping and uh, organizing logistics so p people can uh, not only uh, buy but they can sell things using Amazon uh, public cloud infrastructure and Amazon.com mm -hmm. uh, services. Of course Microsoft was coming from uh, era of personal computers, so they reinvented themselves in the last few years. And uh, Microsoft also came strong with their own public cloud offering. So the, their original uh, software company, basically the only one that has um, uh, a competing public cloud offering. And th there are some other challenging uh, uh, public cloud offers like Alibaba and some, some other uh, companies uh, that are emerging. Mm -hmm. So that's it, mm -hmm. a short history, okay. how, how we came from mainframes to public cloud. Okay, but hybrid and private cloud, this mm -hmm. is our topic today. So basically, uh, all that you said is very valuable and uh, definitely uh, leads to the public uh, to the private and hybrid cloud part um, uh, how it compares to the public cloud so when we are talking about the hybrid and private cloud uh, we can say that uh, both of those have in fact uh, emerged a, a sort of um, uh, initiative by some of the hardware makers and some of the software makers like Microsoft and IBM is very aggressive in offering companies their own private cloud, their own hybrid cloud. So when we are talking about on-premise, um, we talked about it last time, we, we can say that on-premise is something that, okay, so I, I have my own stuff here at home and I know that it's not a cloud, but I'm dealing with that. I can still maybe manage that and that, that's most probably the line of, th line of thinking that most of those uh, companies that still have on-premise installation and that still do not call it cloud have. But when we are talking about the pri private and hybrid cloud, uh, it has sort of been um, imposed by like Hewlett Packard, like IBM, even Microsoft uh, bef before before we had the change of the CEO in Microsoft, we have seen that uh, Microsoft was very uh, aggressive and uh, wanted uh, companies to buy their hybrid cloud inf infrastructure and to put on Microsoft software. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, <laughs> So, uh, historically, IBM was the one who invented a lot of things that are currently used uh, on-prem, in hybrid, or in, in public cloud. So, one of the first inventions wa uh, invention was uh, virtual machines, how to virtualize the mainframes, how to uh, provide uh, specific uh, resources to uh, one application while uh, allowing others to use the same mainframe. And then uh, PCs came and uh, IBM lost uh, copyright on a lot of those uh, patents. Companies like uh, Citrix or like uh, VMware appeared that were suddenly offering virtualization on uh, uh, Intel uh, CPU, so mm -hmm. uh, companies were able to uh, uh, start something like what, what, what uh, uh, vendors would call uh, private cloud mm -hmm. by virtualizing their uh, infrastructure using Intel uh, Intel CPUs without uh, need for minis or mainframes or a big iron to do such things. Uh, as PCs progressed, Th there were uh, new challenges with the internet, 
and with mobile devices mm-hmm. where companies like uh, uh, VMware or uh, Microsoft or uh, Citrix didn't have answer uh, so th- they were not able to scale and they were not able to support really uh, uh, applications mm-hmm. on um, mobile platforms so uh, new business models appeared as well and with the advent of uh, public cloud there was a huge shift of both uh, purchasing power b- because um, big uh, public cloud providers like Google, uh, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, Baidu, Alibaba, they, they can order uh, uh, hardware that is made according to their specification and they can actually have much better pricing, performance and they, they are in a better position to get uh, new new resources Mm-hmm. installed and available and uh, not only achieving uh, um, more economy of scale that they are much faster and they invented new uh, new software models so uh, instead of using virtual machines today most of software is done most software development for internet is done in containers or in platform as a service in in different uh, mm-hmm. uh, development models so a waterfall development model for for software uh, uh, it's not really something that can deliver fast enough today mm-hmm. so a lot of companies had to move to uh, continuous integration continuous uh, uh, deployment and development and uh, somehow uh, on-prem solutions and what uh, as Adriana said older companies would call hybrid cloud uh, just cannot compete and cannot keep pace mm-hmm. so at the moment trend is that for example VMware uh, enables migration and the integration of their uh, uh, existing customers with uh, public cloud providers so you are able to use VMware tools actually to uh, manage your loads in public cloud provider uh, uh, accounts in, uh, uh, but VMware is also implementing uh, a public cloud technologies like Kubernetes li- like uh, uh, containers mm-hmm. into their own uh, portfolio so they are, they are shifting focus from uh, on-prem solutions to being able to help companies on public cloud level as well mm-hmm. So th- this is trend and ma- many companies who are uh, not really um, able to deliver public cloud like Hewlett Packard. So they, they had a number of uh, 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 mm, trials and uh, unfortunately errors. So uh, f- for example, Hewlett Packard tried with public cloud but they were not able to achieve scale and they were not able mm-hmm. to achieve uh, um, a level of uh, uh, services needed mm-hmm. to actually be a public cloud provider so finally they had to, yeah. to shut it down but at the same time they were very aggressive in pitching the private and hybrid cloud yes. hardware to the companies and uh, they asked uh, for lots of money for yes. those so installations b- both licensing and hardware costs are something that um, uh, older companies who are not able to or, or uh, do not have a clear path towards public cloud uh, must leverage to stay afloat because mm-hmm. b- basically they don't have uh, uh, services that they usually have some uh, hardware uh, they are selling but they, they don't have really services that are uh, competitive in yeah. public cloud uh, era. 
So we can say when we are looking at it from the top level, so we have the public cloud like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, that are proper public cloud. They, they are run and operate proper infrastructure that can be called public cloud. But in fact, it can also be called the private cloud in a sense, because it also supports their own operation. And it is in fact a cloud. While at the same time, there are lots of companies, even big ones, that have what they call the private cloud. But in fact, this is something that cannot even uh, begin to be classified as a proper cloud. So uh, uh, in a sense, private and hybrid cloud, uh, where do they stand? I mean, uh, is, is it just uh, the, the nomination going from on-premise and then putting just the, another label on your uh, on-premise installation and just calling it to the cloud? Uh, um, what could we say that private and hybrid cloud really, if you make a strategic decision as an IT executive that you want to have your own private cloud, is it really a sound decision at this point in time, in 2019? Well, not really. There are some edge cases where it might make sense to invest in um, uh, local mm -hmm. uh, compute storage, but, but those are really edge cases and very limited. For new enterprises, new companies, it really does not make sense to uh, use all yeah okay but uh, we are talking about large companies no small large company companies or new company will even are, consider uh, private using cloud. enormous amount of legacy applications and software it can be quite challenging so for them this whole uh, uh, disruption coming from public cloud comes from a uh, number of vectors so one is business vector where, where they are uh, uh, influenced by new business mm -hmm. models uh, and the other is technological, where public cloud offers uh, new things. It's more attractive, and they are still vested. They still have enormous vested interest in their old uh, applications, uh, processes. So transformation and change. How you can move towards uh, public cloud? It's a huge challenge mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Uh, established uh, company. So for, for them, they lack competences, they lack uh, regulation, they mm -hmm. lack um, resources, and uh, especially on management level, mm -hmm. there is uh, no uh, uh, understanding of risk management, what will happen if they move towards public cloud and what will happen if they do not move towards mm -hmm. public cloud. If, uh, for example, uh, uh, th that they're talking about digital, uh, but, but they are just not able, in, in a lot of cases, to embrace mm -hmm. uh, uh, public cloud benefits. And then th there can be a number of uh, consequences when mm -hmm. their efficiency uh, falls below some threshold and th mm -hmm. they start to to have uh, uh, economic problems due to uh, mm -hmm. inability to transform themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we'll stop here uh, for today and uh, we will see you uh, next Monday with the uh, continuation of our talk on private and hybrid cloud. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mladen, for joining me today and see you soon. Thank you. Have Bye. a great day. Bye.